Introduction to Web Programming, CSS Part 2. Let's talk about more CSS. This far we have met three ways to install styles directly to an element. So we have uh, some elements, P, H1, table, and we put some kind of a style to that element. In this example, we set the color red. We can have some classes, so we are putting this color to some class. Or we can put this color to some ID. Three ways. But CSS so far dozens of different ways to locate the right element. We do not have to set the style to directly to some uh, class or an element. The next slide presents a couple of these. And there are plenty of selectors, but you can find them from the internet. So we have classes and pseudo classes. Style definition can be given to several elements at a time. So here we are setting font size for both h1 and h2 element. Uh, style can be given to an element that is inside another element. So this color, gray color, is only set to strong element that is inside a p element. So basically if uh, there is a strong element inside a h1 element, then it does not, its color does not change. Style can be given to the first letter of an element. So here we are setting only the first letter of H1 has a bigger font. Links can be given different definitions. So we have this H link. We are setting the color for that. It is a orange color. And then we have a visited link, link that has been clicked. It has a dark, darker orange color. Then we have these active and hoover links, meaning that link that is clicked, the button is down or the cursor is hoovering over the link. And then we are setting the color is very yellow, not yellow, but very bright orange. More pseudo. Uh, style can be set for an element after the select one. So we set here that we have a P that has a text ident 1 em and then if we have a case that we have h1 element and after that we have a p element then we set text ident 0 so by this definition we have this indentation that we are using in finland which is different than the one in united states so in this this two lines two definitions we set the text to look like it would be the Finnish intention. Uh, we can generate content out from the thin air with CSS. So here we are setting that before a strong element there will be a star. It's asterisk. Only, only one character is generated but you can put the whole word there if you want. And after this strong element there is also a star. And of course, we can combine these all things. So we have here h1 that has class article title. And after that comes paragraph and its first letter is italic. But all these have to be matched before this first letter would be italic in this paragraph. So here is a selector cheat sheet. We have a, this asterisk. It's a universal selector. It selects all the elements. So this asterisk color blue modifies all the elements to have a color blue the text font and then we have this pattern e all elements of type e for example div color blue meaning that all the divs have a text colored blue e comma f comma combinator e and f so we are setting this definition for all the elements that are listed with comma then we have this class all elements with class called class. So in this case, for example, we can set that all paragraphs that have lead class will have one font weight bold. Then we have this negation pseudo class, which means that 
something has not. So all the P elements that have not this lead class will have a font size smaller. Then we have this ID, the elements with ID called ID. For example, div that has ID add and their font size is larger. Then E space F means that descendant selector F of an E. So we are selecting all the paragraphs inside div and defining that font style is italic. All the paragraphs inside. Then we have this E greater than F child selector F of an E. So we are selecting selecting all the P's paragraphs inside the section, but those paragraphs has to be the very child of this checked section, not child of a child. Then this E dilde F general sibling selector F of an E. So we are selecting all the paragraphs that are on the same level than this uh, div element, and we are defining that font style or it font style is italic. E plus F adjacent sibling selector. So we are selecting uh, F of an E. So we are selecting all the paragraphs that are after the div and the font style is italic. Then we have this first child or last child uh, selector. So we can select the first or last child of its parent. So list item first child and the color will be blue or the last child color blue. Uh, then we have this first letter first formatted letter of an element E. So we can take this paragraph that has uh, class lead and its first letter can be bigger with the font size 2 em. And then we have this E before or E after generate content before an E elements content. So with this element that has ID add, we add to asterisk before and after it. Then we have background images. Besides only color, we can use background images. So backgrounds, it's much more than the color, which is defined with this background color. But we can use also background image, background repeat. So how this image is repeated, background attachment. Where is this image attached? Background position. Uh, background size, we can scale it, background origin, background clip, uh, and can be more than one per element. So we can have, uh, let's say, two or three images, and they need to be just separated by comma, and they can have different, for example, repeats, and once again separated by comma. Gradients, so CSS also enables gradients as a background color. So background linear gradient from something to something. So we are starting from red and we are going to the orange. And here we are defining that we are going uh, to right and we are using red and orange once again. And here we are defining that we are going to the bottom right and we are starting from white and going to the black. And here the direction is 60 degrees and once again from orange to the red and we can use several colors and from here here we are going from left to right and we are going from red to orange yellow green blue indigo and violet as the last section so this repeating linear gradient it starts from red and after uh, 10 pixel we are still red and then white to next 10 pixels and then white in the next 20 pixels and so this is like a 40 pixels and then repeat it again and same rules for the radial gradient so this is linear we can also have radial gradients and you can get examples for example from the CSSTricks.com that has a lot of good material when you are learning CSS and want to do some nice fancy designing.
With CSS, we can also have round elements. So CM CSS en enables rounding. Here, each corner is rounded separately. So border radius is 25, 25, 10, and 5 pixels. Here, we define that all the corners are 25 pixels. Here, the corners are elliptical. All the corners are elliptical, 10 pixels slash 30 pixels. And other definitions, border, top, left, radius, etc. is also possible. We can build shading. Uh, text and elements can have some shading. For example, text shadow. We are not moving the shadow at all. We are defining that it's three pixels and its color is red. And then box shadow, we are moving it 10 pixels to right and 10 pixels to down. It's uh, five pixels shadow and its color is gray. And there can be several different shadings separated by comma. So you can design that there would be green shadow on the left and right shadow would be blue or something like that. Then there is this moving and rotating elements. So elements can be manipulated in 2D space. Actually, they can be manipulated also in 3D space, but web pages are not, not that often 3D, so it's not that important. So we can use this transform command and uh, translate some element. So it basically means that we are moving it 20 pixels to right and 100 pixels to the bottom, if I remember correctly. We can rotate it 20 degrees to the left. We can scale it, so it's uh, scaled 50% in x-axis and with 50% in y-axis. Then we can skew it in x-axis. We can skew it also y-axis if we want. Transform skew, which uses the both directions. Then there is this matrix, which uses all these previews together, and this is not that easy easy one command so we are using just a num numerical values there so this is quite a new feature that browsers support this translate rotate and scales directly without this transform keyboard it's a little less writing and then there is a thing called flexbox so flexbox is finally a way to send your stuff easily well there can be cases that it's still in the pain in the ass, but this flexbox is pretty, pretty useful. And centering, is not, centering is, is not the only reason to use it. And it starts with well, uh, setting a container element and its display is set to flex. Then you have this flexbox. And after that, within container, you can set justify content center and then the, all the items inside the container will be centered. Align items, that means the horizontally and align items center. So then they are centered vertically. And once again, this CSS tricks website has a very nice guide to Flexbox. But let's have a short example on this. So there are plenty of um, new features we can now implement with CSS. So we made this music maker, but this looks very crappy as there are no styles at all. So let's add CSS folder here and not there, but here. And let's add a styles CSS file. And we need to, of course, link that file. Yeah. Now we have the style file and then we can start to edit the styles. Let's start with the body. Let's do some magic there. We would like to have some kind of a better background. So let's have a background which has linear gradient and 
we are using colors, grayish colors, but let's go 45 degrees downwards. So it's 133 degrees, degrees, yeah, not percentage. And let's go from white to gray. Like this. Do we get some colors? No. And now we are getting the colors. Yes. So not not that kind of a violet, but gray. And now we can see that this does not fill the whole background. And the problem is that this uh, 45 degree goes from here to here and then it stops. So we can use the background property of attachment and we can set that it's fixed and this fixes our problem and now it's fixed maybe it was even better if we have to see 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 like this okay now we have the background and then we would want to uh, style these buttons they are just too simple and grayish. So let's go with button styling and those input elements. Let's style them both. And what would we need? Let's first add border. So one pixel solid and let's use color. This kind of a pink. Like this, not like this, but this. Yeah, now we have a pinkish color there as a border. Then we need a background color. We can use the same color. Let's add a bit padding there. Five pixels is maybe okay. So yeah, now we have a pink buttons, not quite nice yet but let's change the color so let's go with white and a bit bigger font six uh, 16 pixels and uh, font weight let's go with bold okay now we are having some kind of a buttons there uh, then we could set uh, text align center like this and well there is no text decoration at all yeah maybe this is a bit okay we will still need some fixing here and there but we will do that now you can see that this file choosing box has not taken any color this actual button there are ways to just remove this and then make a pseudo element over it or something like that if you wish. But what we can do here is that we have now said that this padding for every button and input element uh, is 5 pixels. But this is now bigger. Let's make it smaller. So we are taking an input element but only one, one input element with type equals file. And we can set the padding for this only two pixels so now they are si same size that's fine then if we are putting mouse over the button it would be nice if we had some kind of effect there so let's have a button over and input over and here we all only thing we want to make is that we are chasing, changing, changing the background color to white and then we are changing this text color also to this CC and now if we are getting a mouse over the button then there is a hoover effect yeah this is nice then we let's see we have this add buttons 
and they are inside the div which has id add buttons so let's do something for those as they are now next to each other let's add some space so add buttons button and we are giving some margin there so two pixels is quite okay now there are better buttons then we have these tracks and now if we add a track it's just going from up to bottom this is not nice we would like to have them on the horizontal line that would be much better so let's try to do something like that first of all let's remove or actually let's make sure that there are no any margin in this tracks element then we are having this tracks the next div the next child and here we are setting that the display is flex okay let's let's see how it happens and now we are getting them next to each other yeah this looks like shit but we can then continue with the formatting and um, <clears throat> let's add background color we can go with white actually let's go with gray and then add some border two pixel solid and we can go with this pink color and now we are using a flex as a display we can add some height here 50 pixels then batting zero and let's add some margin to the bottom five pixels so we are getting a bit nicer divs here so now we have the tracks set up <clears throat> and the next thing we have this actual word track and now it's in the uh, bottom which is not what we want and the reason for this is that this h2 has some margins so let's get rid of that so tracks the elements that are inside tracks there is this div and inside that div there is h2 which has those labels so we do not need margin let's set up margin that in in the top it's zero on the right side it's 10 pixels on the bottom it's zero and the left side it's zero and now the word is now in the upper part which is okay then we, if we are adding these elements we are only getting this kind of a not that nice text so let's modify that next so once again we are inside the tracks div and then the div inside that and we are doing magic there first let's have some background let's use linear gradient here we go with 90 degrees so we are going from left to right and we can go we can use this colors we have to using this pinky colors but let's start with it, a bit alpha channel there so now if we are adding the elements we can see there is a bit alpha channel so it's getting the gray is, is getting through and next change the font color to white then add, add some padding let's do it like that we add two pixels in the top five to right two to bottom and then to left 
and we set margin to be zero on the top, zero on the right, five on the bottom, and minus five on the left. Let's see what we get. Yeah, now they are going a bit on each other. And the reason is that we are getting the feeling that the track is continuing. So we can continue by setting the width for 100 pixels, that's fine. And then add some border radius. So we do not need them on the bottom, top, but let's add 15 pixels and five pixels here in the bottom. So now we are getting this. And now you, we are using flex in, in a, is shrinking a bit, but then in the end, not that much. And what else we could set a bit bigger font. 1.2 rem does it affect did we get a bit bigger font yeah maybe and let's make it bold and let's add also box shadow so we can set it three pixels to the right three pixels to the down and the size of the shadow is also three pixels and we can use some kind of a grayish color there. And now we are adding instruments. Is there any shadow? Maybe there is some shadow, or is there? Maybe there is something? But it's so small. Yeah, now let's make it so that this first instrument does not go so near to this label. So we are taking the first instrument. So we are once again inside these tracks, inside the div, inside the div. And this div, we are needing the first of a type. So the first div. And to that div, we are just setting that these margins are 0, 0, 5 pixel and 0. So now it's not that there is a bit space here. Maybe we could even put 5 pixels there. Now there is some space. But the rests will still a bit overlap. Now we are happy with this so far. So CSS supports fonts, but nothing guarantees that you are using the font that is installed on the client's machine. If you are using very strange machine that doesn't have a Arial font, for example, then what should the browser show if there is no this font? So some fonts can be found almost on all platforms in the world. So there is this so-called WebSafe fonts. There are also WebSafe colors, but WebSafe fonts are are Arial, Courier New, Verdana and Times, on most cases they work. And of course if you are just using Windows or Mac OS machine, Android, iPhone, then these fonts will definitely work. But of course these basic fonts can be a bit boring. But you can also use so-called web fonts. So for example Google or Mozilla, they offer a massive number of fonts. So for example, fonts.google.com, you can get a plenty of fonts and fonts can be used in CSS. You can link uh, them to your HTML or you can import them to your CSS. Here we are taking a, from this Google API, this font called Roboto, which is widely used in web development. And then in CSS, you can just use the newly imported font, for example, font family Roboto, sans serif will define that we are using this Roboto font, or if, if there is a, somehow this uh, font can't be fetched from the Google, then we are using just some other sans serif font as a fallback. Let's have an example on these web fonts. 
So let's continue by adding a some kind of a font here. So we would like to have a some font. First of all, let's check that we are needing a font for Latin alphabet. Then we are not needing sans serif font or monospace font. Yeah, and I need very thick font. Let's see if this is nice. Let's get this one. Frederico one. So what we need, we are just checking this font and now we have here here all the necessary. I cannot zoom this. This is a Google page and I cannot zoom it. Strange. But let's just copy paste this import clause and add it here in the beginning. So we are importing this font and then what we are using is this font and we can just make sure that our h1 element is now using this font. And now we have a nice title there with a different font. So this from Google API. Yeah, the letters are like very next to each other. So let's add some letter spacing like two pixels. Yeah, I like it that better. So CSS also supports variables nowadays. And well, it's one of the newest features, although it is already years old. And you can define a variable with this dash dash variable and value. And then you can use that variable with the keyword var and in the parentheses dash dash variable. Example, so we are using pseudo element root and we are setting a dash dash main background color, which is almost white. And then we define table that is using background color and we use this war keyword and using this main background color there. You can also define, let's say, some element uh, width. Let's say it's uh, 300 pixels and then some elements using this 300 divided by 3 or something like that. You can do that kind of things. Let's have an example on this. Yeah. And the next thing is these uh, variables, for example, that are in the in the CSS. So let's add a pseudo element root where we define the variable called main color. And here we define that our main color is this CC0088. And now we can use this variable main color wherever we are using this color. So Let's replace this by using that variable main color like this. And now we can get rid of these. Let's see, it's still working. Wherever we have that kind of a color, we can replace it with this variable. We can actually use it here, but we cannot use it here as there is this alpha channel. There are ways we could build using this RGB version where we would have the values in variable and then we would add the alpha channel, but uh, it's not that easy either. There are some other issues, setbacks, so we can function with this. Now we are still having the everything is working, but we now we can very fast, if this color is not what we want, we could have a greenish color. Yeah, extremely not good. Or if we want it to get like orange, we could have orange there. Like this one. But I, I'm, I'm going with this pink one. So this is how you can use a variable in your CSS code. It really easy when you are just uh, using same color for example in various places and you want to change change the color in every place you can just change the variable very useful then you can do also animation with css so uh, animation is based on keyframes so you first define that what is happening in the beginning of the animation and the end you can set as many keyframes as you wish you can have for example, on 0%, on 25%, 50%, and 75%, and 100 if you wish. And in this animation case, we have two frames 
in the first the background color is red and then in the end the background color of the element is blue these are the keyframes called frames and then we have a div and we define that this animation is using this frames keyframes and the animation duration is 10 seconds so it, in 10 seconds the element will have a background transition from red to blue uh, animation can also have a delay iteration counts directions and speed curve too so you can define it like this so there is animation delay two seconds it will then just start you can make it iterate uh, for example three times or five times or infinite so it will loop after one after another you can set the direction reverse alternate alternate reverse whatever you wish uh, animation timing function so it animation can be linear it can be ease ease in ease out or ease in out based on what you like most and you can use this shorthand uh, animation keyword you said that it's using frames uh, then second linear two second in, uh, delay uh, iteration counts infinite and direction alternate for example this kind of a setting could be there let's have an example of animation okay then just let's go with those animations so we don't have here well we could animate for example this effect when we are putting a mouse hoovering the cursor over the buttons but let's do some even fancier let's add a, a snowflake here let's call it this class snowflake and the only thing we need here is just a asterisk and then we have this snowflake class so let's do some definitions there first of all we are setting the position as fixed so it will be there in this in the direct uh, place all the time so it doesn't matter what we are doing here in the web page the snow, snowflake will always be exactly where we want it to be and let's make it so it start 80% of the page and the top would be like minus 150 pixels so it's it's somewhere here in the beginning uh, then we will need the animation itself so we are building the keyframes for the snowflake so frames and let's make it so that we have the zero percent where we are starting and then we have the 100 percent where we are ending and in the beginning the top value is this 150 pixels minus minus 100 so it's very top and in the end the value is 100 percent so it's in the very bottom of the page okay and then let's make it so that this animation name has this frames and then animation duration is 10 seconds uh, animation iteration count we want it to get the infinite iteration and animation timing function could be linear and let's add a bit text shadow to this our snowflake so we do not move to left or right or top or bottom we have five pixel uh, shadow and its color is white like this okay let's see if this is working yeah here we have a snowflake it's coming from top and it's going to bottom like that yeah working but it wasn't that nice so let's let's add a bit a bit bigger like 200 pixels 
So, there is our snowflake. Yeah, but snowflakes aren't that black and they are not going directly from top to bottom. So let's modify these keyframes a bit. So let's first add a color. We could make it so that it's changing from from pink to some other color like uh, this bluish and then let's rotate it so in the beginning it's uh, zero degrees and in the end it's um, 360 degrees we might be uh, required to add some mid steps and let's scale it so in the beginning the scaling is 100 persons and in the end it's 140 let's see what happens so now it's rotating and changing color and there is some shadow and it's getting bigger and bigger all the time okay uh, seems to be working so let's let's add some steps so 75 percent 50 percent and 25 percent so this is like 25 percent 50% and 75% so it's getting from bottom to top and now it's getting from the top and getting going to the bottom and then changing from pink to red and then to yellow and then some kind of a green color yeah and now the rotation needs to be also fixed so in the first it will be 90 degrees then 180 and 270 and then scaling is going 10 percent at a time and there it is getting bigger and changing color and rotating very strange But this is how you can uh, animate things. Now here we have just this uh, this kind of animation that we added the element, but these animations can be also added. For example, when you are adding element, this could be popping up with animation and things like that. By the way, is this thing still working? So if we add a violin bass drum silence silence drum drum silence silence strange beat <laughs> it's still working yeah that's all then we have also css libraries and preprocessors so libraries are here for you in that sense that you don't want to use or you, you don't want to spend your time writing all the CSS from scratch. You can use a library that is providing you all the basic styling. So there are two mainly used materialized CSS and bootstrap. Bootstrap is very, very popular. It's used basically everywhere. And they provide pre-created div layout model. They provide button styling, form styling, etc. You just put the correct class to your element and then your web page will look nice and it will definitely work from a desktop browser and also inside the mobile browser if you are using the layout model correctly. Then we have also CSS preprocessors that provide a way to use 
for example, variables, loops, and functions in CSS. Well, CSS already has variables, but these preprocessors provide uh, additional features that CSS doesn't have. So there is this SAS lang, and it, it requires compiling to CSS before browsers understand the definitions. So you can have the CSS code with additional features like loops and functions to build layout definitions and styling to your web page. And then this SAS is compiled to old and working CSS that is then used in, uh, in the production. Not covered in this course, but widely used in the industry. But you have to also know that CSS is uh, evolving, improving, and we might have a case in the near future that we do not require these preprocessors anymore, but only time will tell. So, as a conclusion, CSS offers several different ways to apply formatting to specific elements. Some are better for one purpose and some for other. The most recent CSS features give better opportunities for elements, backgrounds, corners, shapes and fonts. Well, they aren't that new anymore, but they, they are just something that wasn't there 15 years ago. And as the CSS is still evolving, improving, there might be that you are using a some kind of a feature that is not fully supported by some browser so it's still important to use and use uh, different browsers in testing mainly firefox chrome and uh, safari and then mobile safari and mobile chrome if it works with those browsers then it pretty much works with every browser